So Rami Hamadi is a lecturer in the School of Computer Science and Electronic Engineering at the University of Essex. His main research area is immersive technologies or extended reality, including augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality, and their applications in different sectors, including cultural heritage and education. So I'll pass over on, on to you, Ram, Rami. Go, um, go for it whenever you're ready. Right. Hello, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say um, I really enjoyed the last session because it's so much related and I loved Assassin's Creed. Um, and yeah, so and I'm working in games as well. So it's so much related to what I'm doing at the moment. So anyway, so what I'm going to uh, talk to you today is is a related kind of discipline where I'm working in the same thing. It's entertaining. So we're trying to push for education and entertaining in a different way but we are pushing for um the cultural heritage especially for the egyptian museum part so um quickly i will start with the, just a quick brief about what happened this project was done in 2018 and it started actually when i was just walking at the egyptian museum in caravikas i'm egyptian and i was looking at the, the antiques around everywhere and uh, especially this hall that has all of the antiquities of the of King Tutankhamun, uh, I realized that people didn't spend much time, what, you know, looking at this stuff and enjoying everything there. So at that time, I started to find some solutions, at the, and at that time as well, some new technology just emerged, and I was trying to, you know, use this stuff into it. So let's start. So uh, the project actually, let me just push that here. Um, right, so basically this is the agenda. I made a project called Museum Eye, and this Museum Eye has two different parts. It has a, um, a tablet or a mobile application, and then it turns to be a mixed reality later on. Right, so um, Museum Eye, that's the, the first problem. Like I said, the museum visitors spend like one hour in this entire big place so the the place has 160,000 objects but people spend like one hour when we compare it to the other museums this is a very less number anyway so um also the museum doesn't have any guided tool except the human guide so why not we can just put something interesting there that can make people stay longer and enjoy the stuff so um, so the museum, I, it was like a research project that was built on my PhD work and other publications later on. So I was trying to use augmented reality for the antiques there and find some kind of like uh, attention that bring people uh, to stay longer and enjoy the stuff about the, uh, the content as well. So um, that's more re uh, research related. So I started by doing some exploratory studies, interviews, observation, looking at what people do exactly in that place and some analysis, understanding the real problem. And then after that coming with some solutions. So I started with some interviews with the real uh, visitors and that's what I have found actually. So um, I put the camera there in this hall, I got the permission from the Ministry of Antiquities, and I started to see how people actually looking at the antiques. Um, and I always I found that people just keep looking at the gold and the stuff and just, you know, just, you know, leave the place without spending long time to read and learn more about what is exhibited there. And from then, I started to find some kind of solutions to, to put people spend their more time and read more stuff and learn something new about that place. So anyway, <clears throat> I started actually by uh, scanning the replicas of uh, the antiquities and uh, I got some kind of virtual objects that would actually help because people would like to touch things to feel it. If I want to touch the gold to feel it, I, I need to put my hand in it and it is actually prohibited. So why not we can come up with something virtual can be floating in there and you can actually try to mimic as you're touching and play with it to explore it and get more information about it. So I started by doing some kind of a scanning and then the first prototype was actually applied in Leeds Museum. So there are some Egyptology, there's some Egyptology se section with some antiques. So I went there and I tried to um, 
you know, implement a prototype of how these things would make people happier. So actually it went well and people stay longer and instead of just coming and walking around, but uh, that was just a prototype for uh, uh, the bigger project. So um, I came to the Egyptian museum again, the same hall that has all of the, most of actually the antiquities of King Tutankhamun and I put some kind of equipment there just to see how people react and uh, stay longer. So basically, once you get the, the, your tablet and install the application on your phone, and then you scan the object, you can find a virtual replica and you can play with it and can get some kind of audio guide to hear about it. Uh, but it was actually good, but wasn't that much. People still at that time didn't still stick to books and some readings from textual stuff, and maybe some stories they can hear from the human guide or their friends but that was a potential for, for something might be good in the future. And that would take me to the real application to the headset one. So let me just go with the video quickly. Uh, I will just try to show you the most important part about building the application as a immersive uh, uh, application instead of just mobile or tablet. I got some narrations, animations, <laughs> applying to a portrait of the king, trying the animation and testing the headset. The prototype of the king actually at my home. So yeah, I was actually enjoying him walking my living room. <laughs> and then I didn't get enough of him, so I invited the rest. <laughs> so um, I was actually building the application in order to be there in the museum. So the, the, the queen was sitting in the corner, trying to put them in places, maids and, and soldiers everywhere. So anyway. And let's skip that part. And then uh, another part for exploring every single piece. So you can actually play with your hand. And get secret points about every single antique and I made an announcement uh, and finally I went to the place put the plan get permissions invite people and that was actually the main plan so this is the main hall that has uh, the antiquities of King Tutankhamun so when the visitor arrives here this is our visitor and this is his um, holographic part a portrait or like an AI avatar of the king is standing there and all of these are like uh, gods and imagine this is like the temple of the king at the same time it is the same um, hall of the antiquities so let's say the god is actually safeguarding the antiquities around Anubis and Horus is like portrait of some gods staying there the throne at the end uh, the, the queen and the king here, and this is the uh, King Tutankhamun is welcoming you and take you through this tour. And all of these round um, uh, circles, these circles actually like a portal. Once you walk around and hit these portals with your hand, with your leg or your body, then a new scene will come up. So there is some kind of a storyline coming in this way. So it starts like at a circle. So instead of just walk around in a few seconds, you can actually stay and watch these stations. So let's have a look, enough talking. Uh, this is actually the device. And then this is what people can actually see at that time. So once you arrive, you can find the king is, is welcoming you and showing you some stories and some images showing around. So people can actually stand and walk and, 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 and see these stories. And then at that time, they can see some guards staying around and the gods is flying, you know, all of that stuff. And also you can see some kind of war scenes 
and people riding horses and, and the king is riding the chariot. I know the king is not, <laughs> they didn't make really wars, but it's just a portrayal of what is really happening there. <clears throat> So, uh, and the second part was the exploration of every single piece. So basically you're gonna have like, uh, this is the, his, his a small uh, ebony chair and this is a virtual one. So you can actually look at the authentic piece and then look after that, it comes out of it. So you can actually play with this piece and, and navigate it and, and get some secret points. And then, um, yeah, that's the plan. And like I said, the main reason is or the main aim is not to distract people from the authentic piece. I want people to go there, inquire information, so then the kings rise up again on the right side and I start to speak about this piece and show virtual piece. And you have some virtual buttons. You can actually aim to and click and again, you can get the king to, to talk again. You can have some questions actually. You can get some um, documents, like not, not documents, like a big labels instead of the smaller one. So you can actually read it loudly. You can have some audio narration. You can uh, play with, this is, there is like a small game I will show you later. This game is once you go and click on this secret points, you can get some information about every piece. And there is a knowledge bar there on the left side. Whenever you finish it, you can get a badge of being expert in this piece. So anyway, uh, some technical issues about how I build it. By the way, I built this project my myself actually I spent like a year building it with everything so let's have a look so for example here you can play with Intik you can get some images how this piece was found in in the tomb you can get some scripts and the left side much bigger and then you can bring the king and the king starts with the music and starts to speak about the Intik and give you information as a virtual guy Child chair of Tutankhamun. The solid chair is an everyday piece of furniture that was found in the room called the antechamber. So, um, and after that, I, I actually found some technical issues and started to uh, to make it much easier and I found some kind of like user experience to make people stay longer and feel um, much, you know, they can feel uh, more convenient about using the application without any obstacles or any problems. They can hit buttons, they can walk around, they can, can keep walking with them and so on. So this is part of the demonstration, actually. I am the Egyptian king Tutankhamun from the 18th dynasty, the successor of Smenk Kare, who is the son of Akhnati. When I was 10, I ascended to the throne by marrying Anghesen Pate, daughter and widow of Ahnati. And this is the exploration part. Uh, I made about like 10 pieces, so people actually stay long and look at all of these pieces. So let's keep going and see that the last part is actually making empirical part and make some kind of observation about how people react and surveys and so on. And then I act before doing that, I went to some experts and make sure that this application wouldn't affect the museum experience. And then I found the interactions and satisfaction about how to use it is much better. The academics and experts was in public engagement, visual communication, human computer uh, interaction, museum creators as well from the same museum. And then it, it ended up with something actually positive. So for example, uh, this is what I found, and during the, 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 uh, that, the, I made two different observations. This is before, and this is after. So before I got some numbers, and after I got much better numbers, so let's see, from five to seven seconds in, uh, in front of one single piece to one to eight minutes, and that would result to days, actually, instead of one hour for the entire museum. So... Uh, the participant was 171 person. So the distribution was right, good actually. Um, numbers was the majority from uh, uh, 18 to 25 who love this technology and 26 to 40. So yeah, less from 41 to 60, but this is what people actually like, you know, more technology stuff and so on. I don't want to bother you with this more uh, information, but 
Yeah, so I measure the usefulness, the multimedia, the ease of use, interactive design, enjoyability, and rule of being a guide. And this is the video of what observation I have done during the testing of the, the application. The most interesting is I found some creators who used to work in this hall for uh, 10 years and they enjoyed actually to see the king at the same room they used to work for 10 days, 20, 10 years. So like for example this one, she's a creator in that place and she was amazed to see all of these visuals around because she can see at the moment like a temple plus the rooms and it is so much safe you can actually walk and, and interact and move around and play with the stuff and still learn you still can interact and and without any obstruction from other visitors or anybody can actually uh, stop the experience from being running so yeah uh yeah So eventually, uh, yeah, from few seconds to five to seven minutes. So what I wanted to say that this kind of technologies would actually embed the education plus the entertaining at the same time for um, for our museums. I know it's a bit off talk, but uh, about the main context. But I really enjoyed working with the uh, Tutankhamun. Uh, um, antiquities because it's actually well known everybody know it about it and they really the people just once they know that i'm working at this very vital room in the museum they just came in long queues and they tried to test it and see another perspective and the most important thing at that day um one of the grandsons of um of the uh, um uh the discoverer actually of the tomb uh, was there. I can't remember the name, but uh, he really enjoyed that. He was just by accident visited the museum and really enjoyed the experience. And uh, I was really happy about the positive impact of that. And at that, today we know that all of these pieces have been moved to the gym, the Grand Museum. And hopefully you can see something interesting once the new museum opened and we can really enjoy more stories about that. Uh, and I wanted to say that the new stuff is coming like that, new glasses and new headsets and new stuff like that. And I think the museum will take a big part to enjoy this experience and people will see much better stories instead of just traditional kind of way of visiting museums. That's all, and sorry for long talk, and I hope you enjoyed my presentation.